Hi, my name is Oboe. I am a singer, songwriter, hair enthusiast in the Nairobi area. <laughs> Being One Boy has been an interesting journey for me. Um, the many, 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 many highs that um, have really gotten me to experience and enjoy all the good things that there, there is to enjoy in this life of ours. And extremely low lows that have been devastating, frustrating, um, where you really take a beating and you're like, oh my goodness. Uh, can I really do this thing? Can I? Will I really be one of the people that will be have said that will be said to have succeeded in this journey called life? I know it's hard to believe because you guys really just know me from what um, my two friends and I have expressed over the internet with regards to our beautiful songs and whatnot. And I, 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 I come across as being very. Uh, wild and fun and all these things and everything in between but that really is the power of music and I haven't always been like this because straight from my mother's womb I wasn't a fan of even going outside I would cry when and your 10 a.m. I would cry I wouldn't I didn't like that um, fast forward I'm now a young little girl in pre-unit I still didn't care to go out and play with other children. Instead, I would um, look at the kids in the estate uh, from the window that would face the court. And that's where I would uh, just view the kids and just look at them playing. And once in a while, I'd call my sister and go like, Amaida. Then she'd come to the window and I'd just wave and she'd be like, oh, you're saying nothing. And go back to the other kids and continue to play. Fast forward to I'm a little bit older now. My sister would try to be like, hey, let's go, let's have fun, let's go, let's go. And I just rather prefer to be in the corner of the room as opposed, as opposed to be the center of attention. And I remember very clearly during that moment, during that season of my life, I was always known as Wamaita's well, sister. Wamaita well, is my sister. I was known as Wamaita's well, sister. I didn't even really have a name, but yeah, that's Wamaita's sister over there. Yeah, that's Wamaita's sister. So yeah, fast forward. Um, a beautiful mistake uh, called Elani happened because for me it was really, I liked a guy and I was going to Allianz, which is where we all met for the first time, um, to be with this guy and spend time with this guy. Little did I know that they were trying to figure something musical out. And when I was asked to sing, I mean, I just sang. I didn't think much of it, but nobody cringed. And so they were like, okay, so that's your part. Uh -huh, you, this is your part. And then all, all together, you guys are singing. And fast forward, Elani just became a monster a few years from then. And um, everybody was enjoying the music we were writing and we didn't really think it was the coolest, but people were like, oh my God, this is so cool. So we just kept going and the monster that is the fan base began and it just became a wild thing that carried us into this beautiful season. And I mean, the, the applause was bananas. And, and this really ignited something in me, especially when we were on stage. There's this ridiculous, a supernatural thing that happens when you're on stage and you're singing. I kid you not, you're untouchable. It's a fire that burns in you that is so real and that is so cutting edge and you cannot deny it. And then when you give that energy to the fans and they give it back to you, it slaps you even 10 times harder. That thing really got me to come out of that little shell of mine where I was the, the chick that preferred to sit in the corner and now all of a sudden I'm smack in the middle of the room and I'm the center of attention and I loved it and then we go home and on social media we have people saying oh my god you're so beautiful oh my god your eyes are so nice oh my god look at her hair that became the thing that strung all my comments along I was now being identified as the chicken Elani with the natural hair that became my brand. Yeah, now I'm feeling good about myself and everything is completely on cloud nine. And unfortunately, uh, a few years from that season, I started to lose my hair. And, and it really hit me really hard because I tried to do absolutely everything it is that I knew how to do, but nothing was working. And 
it made me feel lost. Over and above the frustration of actually seeing your hair falling out, it made me feel lost because I had started to also see myself as a chick with a natural hair in Elani. And now I was like, okay, so who am I gonna be? Because slowly my hair is falling. And then it continued to take a toll on me because now I didn't feel very confident standing in front of people, presenting myself and sharing my ideas, my visions, uh, my whatever, really, even just a joke. Because I just felt like the eyes in the room were just looking at my scalp and, and how now you could start to see through my hair because it was clear that there, there was definitely something wrong. And what I didn't realize, um, and I came to realize much later, is that the applause of the chick with the natural hair, oh my goodness, you are so beautiful, oh my god, your eyes are to die for, and all these compliments that I got from people started to become the thing that was defining who I am, even in my eyes. And I held on to that, and that became who I believed that I was. So when the hair started to fall off, I was feeling lost because I was like, who am I without the hair? What, what are people gonna like about me without the hair? And I, I hated that feeling. I hated how I completely let all those comments, all those good things that they had to say about me be the thing that defined me and told me who I was. So after my diagnosis, because I was diagnosed with androgenetic alopecia, which is a genetic form of hair loss, it was, it was a, it was a, a moment where I finally got to sigh and catch some relief. Uh, but it was difficult for me to then look at myself in the mirror and confirm to myself that I genuinely liked and cared and loved who it is that I saw. And despite the, the good news of the diagnosis and the fact that it, I could be helped, I was left with many questions for who is your boy? Why is it that what everybody has to say about you is more important than what you have to say about you? Why is it that in the absence of the noise, in the absence of the applause, you feel lost? That clearly showed me that I lacked a good foundation of understanding and knowing myself to the point that I loved myself just for who I was. And I had to embark on a journey that shed light to me because it was now about just me and not shut down all the noise and it's about me and what I think and what I want and where I want to go and how I see it and what is good for me and what isn't good for me. That became the most primary project for me to be able to really understand because without the people I had a shell and that's not how life is supposed to be. And I realized that I, I had so many good things going on. I am a daughter who has done incredible things that has made my parents proud. I am a sister who, who has, just doesn't have a sister by blood, but we are really, really good friends. I have sisters, chosen sisters, that are not really my blood family, but these are women that I continue to work with where I, I support them where they need support, I celebrate them where I need, they need to be celebrated, and they do the same for me. And those are the things that are important. It's not the applause. It's not what people say about you. I love that at the core of who I am, I am, I love who I am. I really do. And I wouldn't trade it for anything.